Absolutely. I'll be watching. Okay. We are ready. So uh, last week I shared uh, quite a bit of information about this Apache path traversal CV, but I didn't get a chance to actually show uh, the code execution, right? So uh, for those who didn't get a chance to watch that, uh, please uh, go check that out. But uh, basically the first thing we're, we're trying to do here is from this website, it's giving us different payloads we can test out, right? So this first one is you put your IP address, a CGI bin, a bunch of these uh, URL encoded characters that will get translated to dot dot, which is uh, the path traversal, right? Notation for Linux systems and then Etsy password, right? So if we quickly uh, jump here to my Ubuntu box and we try that, check it out, right? We get a forbidden. And so uh, what's happening here is, and if you're sort of, you know, you don't take it a step further, you could just try that payload. And it's like, oh, I guess this system's not vulnerable. But in this particular case, uh, for that this target system, the administrator configured the vulnerable directory to be CG. So if you said change it to CG, you would actually get that track uh, path traversal to get it working, right? So this goes to show go. This just goes to show you that just cutting and pasting and just sort of not thinking it through and just cutting and pasting, it doesn't necessarily will enable you to verify whether or not there's there's a vulnerability, right? So that's a really important point. So uh, the, the next part of it is that later on in this documentation, it claims that if you use this notation right here, you'll be able to get code execution. So let us give it a shot. So here, paste, and in this case, right, the uh, the port is just 80, which is the default. And then we change it to CG, right? We run this and we get this kind of error message. And uh, so it doesn't look like we get code execution here, right? And for those who are, and but for those who want to dig deeper into this, right? Think about what this is actually telling us. And uh, the other thing I wanted to share about this was, okay, I also wanted to share this aspect of it, right? So right now, uh, for as a pen tester, I'm trying to throw different type of traffic towards the web server to observe different, uh, what kind of behavior I'm, I, I, I'm getting, right? So basically I'm doing experimentation against the server to gather facts, right? So right now I got rid of that argument. And if I run this, uh, okay, that, so that, da that data argument was specified the stuff that I deleted. But anywho, if we run this, right? we get this kind of error message. And again, this is for uh, the viewer to sort of experiment with and think about, okay, why, why are we getting this, right? So, okay, so that's what this website said, right? This website said, use this to get a code execution. Now I'm gonna go to this other website. So at this other website, uh, it gives uh, more information. And let's see if the information is here. Okay, right here. And it claims that if I do this notation, I would be able to get a uh, code execution. So let's let's try it out. So here we go. Right here, uh, once again, right, uh, CG, and then we're gonna hit this and we run and we get a very similar error message. So it looks like this particular, uh, this particular web server, this particular website, is not vulnerable to code execution. Okay, but uh, so the, the reason I bring this up is that when you're reading these CVs and it tells you, hey, this version of this application has this vulnerability, in, in order to figure out the real risks of the vulnerability, in this case, we have, uh, we can read files, right? We could read files on the file system. But in terms of code execution, we don't have that. And so for us, if we want to dig into it more, we should find out what are the details that really makes uh, this version of Apache vulnerable to ex code execution and whether that, that is a real risk for us, right? So that's, that's the point of running that. But the thing is, is that I, was, I, I created another uh, web server and this other web server is running at this path and this port number, right? So if I run this, check this out, right? I do get code execution. So this is a really good exercise for um, the CFC red team volunteers. The, the, the 
this one of the big secrets of getting really good at pen testing and red teaming is if you actually go and set up your own services, in this case, right, web services with all the different modules, right, with all the different configurations. And if you actually go through that process of getting these services running in their default configurations and then also in, uh, uh, in, insecure configurations, your understanding of vulnerabilities and how to exploit these system will rise dramatically. That's why, you know, in our bootcamp, we, we kind of harp really hard that you have to create your own VMs, right? Because that's the real secret of really uh, getting good at, 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 at this kind of work. So again, right? So, okay, so that was the ID command. And right, so I could run other commands too, right? Like uh, uname a And in this case, right, it gives me the Linux version right here. And then, okay, this, this is a, another really important detail, right? So check this out. If I run something like cat Etsy password, right? That will give me uh, the results of the Etsy password file. But if we go back and if we run the very first, the very first one right here, right? Where there's no code execution, we run this, we also get the same results. But in terms of what the vulnerability is doing and how we're getting the the output of the etsy password file it's using two entirely different mechanisms and so on the surface in terms of the results you think like hey what's the big deal it doesn't matter but it matters a lot one is code execution and the the this 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 one right here it's just the ability of reading files right it's like night and day even though the examples i'm giving is the same result so that's something for you to experiment with and and play with and, and lastly, the last thing I want to show the, about- Also, Candy. Yes. There's another difference, and one is a post and one is a get. Yes, that's that's a really good detail. And please e explore that, explore that as well. Thank, thank you for sharing that. Uh, okay, the, and then the, the last one I wanted to share was this one right here, right? So, you know, from this website, it's giving us, you know, all these uh, different ways of triggering the vulnerability. And in this second option, right, it says it claims that this uh, icon directory is vulnerable. So, you know, let's give it a shot, right? So let's go here. Okay, this one right here, right? Instead of external, let's try icons. And instead of bin bash, we'll just do uh, Etsy password, and we're, we're just trying to read the file here, right? So right here, the Etsy file. Okay, I think I got, okay, I think I got ahead of myself. But okay, so that, that payload worked. So the, the point of, of this part of it was that I believe I configured one of my shares where icon will not work, and my other web server, I, I had it where icons will work. So this, this goes against, it, it depending on the target environment and how that web server is actually configured to know uh, which part of it is actually vulnerable to uh, what, what kind of payload. So that was the last point I wanted to share about uh, this vulnerability. And, and again, if people want to get good at this, right, uh, install this vulnerable version of Apache um, in, uh, configure it so you can actually uh, get this exploit to work. And I recommend that for the people who already finished all of what we already have in the exercise for the bootcamp, right? Uh, do this if, if you're like way ahead and you finish all the exercises. So the next, uh, the next thing I wanted to share really quick was uh, something that will be helpful for your troubleshooting. And as, as pen testers, we run in, into this kind of issue uh, quite a bit and you have to sort of really up your troubleshooting game, right? It's all about having the skills of troubleshooting and figuring out what's really happening, right? So first off, I have an FTP server uh, running on one of my servers here. So I do FTP uh, 192.168.237.140 and let me move this over here just a little bit, right? So I do this, right? Log in anonymously bar, right, ls, right? So I'm able to FTP to this server just fine, right? And I'm able to run commands. And uh, for pen testers, what we need to do, the skills, you'll be able to, you'll need to learn how to interact with the FTP server, how to download and up upload files, right, with FTP commands. So that's what you're gonna need to prepare yourself for the competition. So so that's, that is a directly connected uh, uh, server machine to my client machine. 
So let's try another machine, right? So two, four, six, dot five, right? So I'm FTPing here, right? Anonymous foobar, right? I do the LS command. And in this case, what's happening here is I'm getting an illegal port command, buying address already used. For people who know the answer, don't, don't blurt it out. So, so basically what, 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 I'm share, what I'm sharing here is that, right? I connect to one FTP server. I run FTP commands, it works. I connect to this other one and it doesn't work. So one of the clues here is that this server is natted, right? And so uh, don't, don't tell the answer because this is a really good exercise because it will sort of require the, our red teaming volunteers to learn so much about uh, protocols about how traffic, uh, how natting works, right? How routing works. So, so don't blurt out the answer, but you know, just just sort of a show of the hands, or just you know, put in whatever. Like, do you know why? Don't tell the answer, but if, if I'm curious if anyone actually knows why, uh, I'm trying to run ls or dir here with my second one, uh, with the second server here is not working. Okay, no no response so far, but. So this is a really good homework exercise, right? Try to set up a, a NAT environment with FTP and figure out why if your client is behind a NAT and if you try to FTP to the server and, and run commands, like I logged in successfully, right? Not a problem there. But when I try to uh, run commands, it's not acting properly, right? And my, 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 my hint though to the group for people who don't know, uh, okay, good, um, uh, good job, Todd, I, I, I bet you do, uh, yeah. Let's, let's see if, if uh, others can figure out by going through the exercise. And th this is the other thing. The, the way I want you to sort of figure this out to sort of make you better is uh, number one, I recommend to use Wireshark, right? Use some kind of a traffic uh, a packet ana analyzer and then run this and then uh, do it for a working condition, like have a server that works for, and then try to set up a NAT condition, then do it. And then if it's not working, compare the network traffic and find out and then do your research. Because the thing is for, for this problem that I'm sharing right here, you could definitely Google the answer. You can Google something and then the, the Googles will give you like, okay, this is why. But for you to really have an intuitive understanding and have the ability of troubleshooting and figuring out problems in this category that Google won't give you the answer that you can just regurgitate, right? That's, that's night and day, right? Just someone, just repeating an answer that they're just reading versus actually knowing how it works. And so uh, with that, unless there's any questions or comments, I'm going to uh, end this demonstration.